Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to Good Night Sleep Tight, where your favorite Auntie Fonda is going to read you a daytime, nighttime, or anytime story. And tonight's story is going to be Corduroy Takes a Bow, written by Viola Davis, based on the characters created by Don Freeman. And as you can see, Corduroy Takes a Bow, this is your title. And this is your author, Viola Davis. And Don Freeman is the man who started writing about Corduroy. And this is Corduroy. Does anybody know what Corduroy is? He's a bear, a teddy bear. And with that, we're going to get started. Corduroy. So again, Corduroy takes a bow. And it's a story by Viola Davis with B.G. Hennessy. And the pictures are drawn by Jody Wheeler. And again, the story is based by characters created by Don Freeman. It was just starting to snow when Lisa and her mother got off the bus in front of the theater. Lisa held Corduroy tight as they walked up the steps. She had never been to the big theater like this before. Neither had Corduroy. They had come to see a performance of Mother Goose Rhymes. In the lobby, people were picking up tickets. Ushers handed out programs. A brass chandelier hung from the ceiling that was painted with clouds. Suddenly, the lights flickered on and off. That means the play will start in a few minutes. We should find our seats, said Melissa's mother. Lisa held her mother's hand a little tighter and held Corduroy a little closer. The usher took their tickets and showed them where to sit. The seats are so soft, said Lisa. She put Corduroy on her lap and looked through the program. Right before the play started, a very tall man sat down in front of Lisa. Mommy, Lisa whispered to her mother, I can't see. Here, dear, said her mother, we can fold our coats together and you can sit on top of them. When Lisa stood up to sit on the coats, the orchestra, the orchestra started to play. She forgot all about corduroy. He slipped off her lap and fell underneath the seats in front of them. Poor corduroy. Now I can't see anything, said Corduroy. Maybe if I got closer to the music, I could see the stage. He peeked down the aisle and saw some stairs. When Corduroy got to the top step, the big red curtain went up and up and up. Corduroy was so startled that he lost his balance and tumbled into the orchestra pit. He looked all around at the musicians and thought, this is a good spot to hear the music, but now I can't see the stage at all. At the back of the orchestra, there was a tall set of drums. Maybe if I set up there, I could get a better view, he thought. Quietly, he crawled through the orchestra, past feet, between instrument cases, and around music stands toward the drums. How did you get here, little fellow? The drummer whispered to Corduroy. You must be a prop from the play. 
Someone will be looking for you. He put Corduroy up on the ledge behind the drums. There was a chair off to the side behind the curtain. I could get a better, I could see better from there, thought Corduroy. But before he got to the chair, a stagehand tripped on him. Sorry, Bear, said the stagehand. He put Corduroy on the table with the other props. The table was hard, not like Lisa's soft seat in the theater. Backstage was very busy. Actors were coming and going, changing costumes and getting their props. One actor almost grabbed Corduroy. I could find, I should find a safer spot, he decided, and hid between the costumes. This is safe, he thought, but I'll never see anything from here. There was a tree with a basket in its branches and the wing off to one side of the stage. I would be able to see from there, Corduroy thought, and he climbed up the tree and into the basket. Well, thought Corduroy, this is more like it. Not too high, not too low. This is just right. He settled in and watched the Mother Goose performance. I love the theater, said Corduroy. After a number of different scenes, the stage manager called out, final scene, everyone, take your places. Stage hands quickly moved new scenery onto the stage while the actors went, and went to stand in position. Suddenly, Corduroy's tree began moving right onto the stage. Then it started to grow. Up, up, up went the tree, the basket, and Corduroy. Ooh. This is a very tall tree, said Corduroy as he looked down at the stage far below. The, tr the tall tree made him think of the tall man who sat in front of Lisa. Corduroy wondered, how will I get back to Lisa if I'm up in this tree? On the stage below, Mother Goose started to sing. rock a bye baby on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. Off stage, a fan blew air into the branch. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm sorry, kids. <laughs> Off stage, a fan blew air into the branches of the tree. The cradle began to rock back and forth, up and down, back and forth, and up and down. Corduroy was getting dizzy. He held onto the sides of the cradle as it rocked faster and faster. Mother Goose kept singing, when the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. And crack, the bow did break. And down will come baby cradle and all. Down, down, down came corduroy, cradle and all. Before Corduroy knew what was happening, Mother Goose scooped him up for the curtain call. 
The audience clapped and as the actors bowed, Corduroy bowed too. After the curtain call, the cast took Corduroy backstage to the dressing room. Who does this bear belong to, they wondered. The usher brought Lisa backstage. Corduroy, there you are, said Lisa. How did you get on stage? I couldn't see and I wanted to get a little closer, said Corduroy. Oh, Corduroy, said Lisa, you certainly got closer. The very next day, Lisa made a theater just for Corduroy. He could see everything from a nice, safe spot. The end. So what do you think, boys and girls? What do you think about Corduroy and Lisa's first time at the theater? Can you remember your first time at the theater or have you ever been to the theater? So if you wanna tell me about it, just leave me a comment down below or tell your parents to leave me a comment. Just talk to me. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if there's a book that you want me to read, just leave me a message in the comment area below and I will try my hardest to find the book so that I can read it for you. And remember that this is Auntie Fonda's first time reading a book so <laughs> on her YouTube channel. So I hope you liked it. And remember everybody, little boys and girls, big boys and girls, that Jesus loves you, and so do I. Bye.